Hello, this is Virtual the Chess Noob, learning and having fun with chess. Today at lunch I played a rapid game with the black pieces and was very excited to have an opponent play the Vienna game against me. The Vienna game is my favourite opening as white, and as it seems not to be very popular, I rarely get to play against it. Right after we entered the main line, I had a quick chat with the opponent congratulating them on playing the Vienna. They noted that they were new to the Vienna and were trying it out. Unfortunately for my opponent, they didn't recognise one of the potential dangers when playing the Vienna that results from the, from the delayed development of the King's Knight and the early F-pawn move. Specifically, that the opponent with the black pieces has the option of playing the violent looking and forcing move Queen h4 with check. Please enjoy! Okay, so I had the black pieces. Quick look at analysis, chess.com's algorithm. Uh, this was a fairly short game. I think uh, the opponent resigned on move 14. Uh, and as you can see, very equal. Uh, until the opponent made a um, made a blunder, and, and that basically pretty much ended the game. Now, I suppose I was more familiar uh, with the opening, as this is my favourite opening, so I played reasonably accurately, uh, almost 90%, and as this was new for my opponent, somewhat less accurately. Though it's interesting here uh, that the opponent, you know, they're, they're definitely not uh, not a complete newbie, you know, uh, in the sort of mid 1300s, so a good player, good intermediate player. Uh, it just shows that you know the Vienna game mainline uh, can be a little bit tricky to play and you do need to probably know a little bit of theory. Let's have a look now at the analysis. All right, so when I usually talk about the uh, Vienna game, I, I have the white pieces. So unusual in that I had the black pieces in this game, but e4, e5, knight c3, which enters the Vienna. Uh, against, uh, when I play against uh, the Vienna, I always play. Uh, knight f6, uh, and the um, and the opponent I would expect would play the Vienna Gambit, which is f4, uh, and to enter the main line. So the best way, in fact, the only good way of responding to the Vienna Gambit is to immediately play d5, and this starts the Vienna game main line. Uh, and the response d5 is the only move that doesn't immediately concede some advantage to white. And in fact, by playing d5, there is a small advantage to black. Uh, and interestingly enough, if we sort of go to uh, the sort of openings, uh, the openings database, um, for, these are of masters, uh, master games. Uh, basically, at this point, it's pretty even. You know, white and black are doing um, basically equal. So uh, the expected. Um, so here the opponent uh, captured with that pawn, um, which is okay. I'm not sure that was necessarily the best pawn to capture. Um, that might potentially um, be might potentially be better. But you know, either is kind of okay. I suppose the advantage with playing that is you immediately put a threat to the knight as well. But you know, Stockfish wasn't wasn't too too worried about it uh, again. But when we look at Masters games, when when that capture takes place, um, black wins almost half the time. So, so maybe from a practical perspective, it is better to capture uh, to capture uh, the other way. So here, the most logical thing for black to do is, of course, to capture. Uh, and here, um, what you would normally do would be to play the other knight. Now, in this game, my opponent opted to capture the other pawn. Now, as you can see, uh, a significant advantage to black now, uh, but the best move here, uh, the best move here now for black is to straight up capture. Uh, and, and that's what you would normally expect, and then so the opponent will have to make a decision about uh, which pawn to capture back. However, in this position, there is a fairly tricky line for black. Um, whenever sort of the opponent allows it, it's often good for black to immediately play queen h4 with check. And that's what I did in this game. Now you will see that this is not the most accurate move for black. Now this almost puts us straight back to equality. However, this is now fairly difficult for white to defend against. You have to play very accurately. You have to know what you're doing because you know, these pawns are basically now missing in front of the king. So this pawn is all the way out here. Uh, and so it gets pretty tricky. So uh, the logical move, uh, probably the best move is to block with pawn. 
Uh, however, here I can now do Night Captures Night. You know, that's um, apparently a great move. I think that's the only good move uh, for, for Black in this position. And basically, there's a standoff here. And, uh, and the invitation is, of course, trading queens, but we're only sort of on, on move seven. Um, and my opponent thought, no, I don't want to trade queens. This is still threatened. There's a feel that this, is, uh, this, uh, this queen isn't achieving anything. However, that's not the case because queen, he comes with check and I've removed the defender. I've removed the defender of the e4 square with that knight capture. Uh, now opponent captures and you see, look, minus five. And basically that now comes with check. So that, uh, that, uh, that rook is now, uh, now sort of basically toast. And because their pawn is still on the, uh, on the e-file, you know, the opponent can't capture their own pawn, that is now gone. Now that looks like, you know, maybe it could get trapped. Now, doesn't it? Um, but obviously the bishop can't go here because otherwise, you know, that comes with check again. Um, but the knight looks like it can go there. And that looks like it blocks, doesn't it? Because it looks like, you know, maybe, uh, maybe, um, uh, so maybe that the sort of queen can't move out of that, can't move it out of their square now because that's now defended, of course. That is, of course, defended. Um, and the knight, of course, looks like it's defended. But that's not actually the case because one of the things with this particular setup is that these diagonals from the bishop are open. And that's again, potentially really powerful. So even that looks like a really natural looking move, uh, it's worsened now to minus seven and a half. So bishop g4, basically now pinning uh, potentially this, uh, pinning this, uh, this uh, knight. And of course the threat is to uh, potentially sort of capture and next turn, so getting very, very tricky now. The opponent gives a check of their own, minus 12. And here, you know, it looks like they're potentially gonna attack that. Uh, looks like there's no way I can defend against it. But actually, um, it doesn't matter for them to capture that because it ends up being on this diagonal. So here, block. Um, so, so Stockfish liked uh, going this the other way. I actually thought that this was potentially better because the knight is defended by the king. Uh, the opponent captures a pawn as expected, minus 16. So each of these sort of moves sort of cascades down into a more and more problematic uh, position. Because now I can uh, capture, now I could capture either with the bishop or the queen. Here I was actually fine with a queen trade, I thought. A fine with a queen trade. Now, of course, the opponent now can't capture that okay, rook because you know, it's guarding uh, that diagonal. Uh, what is the opponent going to do? I was hoping and thinking that they'll capture that pawn. And that's what they did. They should have traded queens at this point uh, because now I've got check. And you know, you can see there's a mating net now already. So there's a check, king forced to move. There's now another check. And in fact, the only way of, stop, of preventing a very, very close, uh, close checkmate is in fact to sacrifice the queen for the bishop. That's the only way the opponent can, uh, can prevent um, a very rapid checkmate. Of course, it's just a, not a natural thing to do. Um, they try to block, uh, but it doesn't work because now I've got queen back with check and here the opponent resigned. Uh, but what, but what, uh, but, uh, but let's see what it could look like. So the king now only has one or two squares it can move, either those two squares. Uh, now, if it firstly, if it goes to this square, uh, that's checkmate right away. So obviously uh, that's easy to see to avoid, but if they go here, it doesn't make any difference because now I've got check, um, that is protected. Uh, these squares are protected by the queen, so the opponent is forced to block, and then that's checkmate. So either made in one or made in two. Um, so, you know, very, very sort of a, a potential sort of tricky position here. So here we go. This is where the opponent opted to resign. Um, you do have to play the Vienna main game, uh, main line carefully, and you need to be careful uh, of the queen coming to the H four square with check. Um, so good game, GG. I'd never actually played this line before with either the white or black pieces, but did know that queen h4 check was possible. 
The fascinating thing here in analysis is that in the Vienna game main line, Black actually gives up a little bit of advantage making this move, and according to Stockfish, Black and White are almost dead even. However, this equality is only maintained by accepting a trade of queens, something that might not feel right on move 7. The intuition to keep the queens on the board results in Black being one step ahead with the queen creating threats with open diagonals for both bishops, and this is enough for a major advantage. The easiest way to avoid all this nastiness is to simply play knight f3 in anticipation. I hope you found this game interesting, and thanks for watching!